They're projected the least amount of wins in the NBA next season. They traded off their best player, Mikel Bridges, to the New York Knicks this offseason. I don't think there's any debate when I'm going to say that the Brooklyn Nets are the worst team in the NBA right now. But thankfully, Brooklyn Nets fans, you have me to rebuild your team. And we're going to be rebuilding the Brooklyn Nets on NBA 2K25. Man, this team really had James Harden, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving a couple years ago. And now they're led by Cam Thomas, Nick Claxton, Cam Johnson, and Ben Simmons, who's still making $40 million a year. And he's played just a little bit over 100 games since the 2021 season, four NBA years. It's actually mind-blowing how bad that contract is aged since Philadelphia has given an out to him. But yeah, today we're going to be rebuilding the Nets. Now, you saw the Spurs rebuild where I was able to build around Wembenyama. That was very easy. Today, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I did throw the simulator difficulty up to 60 as well. So this team may win less than 20 games this season and it's not a very exciting starting five i think we're just gonna hope that bojan bogdanovich dennis shooter cam johnson build up some trade value cam thomas and nick claxton i hope take the most amount of shots on this team it might not be nick claxton to start but definitely after the deadline i'm probably gonna move on from dorian finney smith i may release ben simmons and i'd like to see some of the young guys develop like noah Clowney, daron sharp and Derek whitehead as well and i'm also kind of high on jalen wilson who was a second round pick in the 23 draft out of kansas we started off the season getting blown out by the atlanta hawks by 20 i'm also not afraid to trade some of these guys before the deadline and what was nice what they did this offseason getting all those draft picks from the Knicks they also got their first round picks back with the Rockets so we own our first round pick this year the Rockets will get the Suns pick so I don't even think 2k did that accurately but yeah we can be bad we can land the number one pick to get Cooper Flagg or somebody like that and we're able to keep that pick which is nice Cam Thomas had a nice game here I don't know when our first win is going to come by because we're 0-5 to start off the year can we beat Chicago no. We're not going to get our first win against Detroit either. We're going to lose by seven. Cam Thomas had 20. Finney Smith had 20. We're 0 and 7 to start off the year. We're going to make that 0 and 8 as well. We're going to lose to the Grizzlies by nine. I thought we were going to have a chance to pick up our first one against Boston. Pull off the upset. It's not going to happen. We got outscored by 17 points in the third quarter. Cam Thomas had 30 points and 11 assists in the L. Finally, though, it's looking like we're going to pick up our first win against the Cleveland Cavaliers on the road as well. I mean, I could definitely choke this. Donovan Mitchell is going to score that over me. It's an 11-point game with three and a half to go. Wow, just a horrible set there. Isaac Okoro doing a great job defensively. Cam Thomas, I need you to bounce back a little bit. There we go. Cam Thomas, who is tired. Pull-up jumper. That is good. Up by 13. Claxton does have 12 and 16 in this game. We're going up against former Nets center in Jared Allen. Harris Levert, another former net from three. That is no good. Rebounded by Cam Johnson. Ben Simmons does have 16, 5, and 5 in this game. I just don't know if he's going to have a future on this Nets team. Let's see if Ben Simmons can get to the rim. He's actually not that slow. Find Claxton inside. He's got the size advantage. He gets that to go. Ben Simmons with his sixth assist of the night. I also have to evaluate Cam Thomas this year because he's due for an extension at the end of the year. He was in the 2021 draft class. Is he going to be worth a rookie max extension? And can we build around him as a top two option when we're trying to be good in a couple years from now. Ben Simmons inside right over Donovan Mitchell. These two had the rookie of the year race back in the 2018 season. And we did pick up our first win. So we're one and nine on the year. So we did pick up our fourth win of the season on December 1st. Cam Thomas had 32 in this one. Noah Clowney had a nice game here. I think it's time for a mini fire sale. We're going to try to get ahead of the market. There is yet to be a trade this season, so we're going to be the first to do that. And we're going to start off by sending Dennis Schroeder to the LA Lakers and a second rounder in 2028 for Gabe Vincent, who's not on the greatest contract going forward, and he's not having a good offensive year. So we got to eat that money, which is fine. And I'm getting the Lakers 2029 first round pick in this deal. Next up, I want to see if the Memphis Grizzlies would give me their 2029 first and John Conchar, who's also not on a great contract going forward, not even playing this year. And I'm going to send them swingman Dorian Finney-Smith, Will they accept this? They are going to counter it with two seconds. We'll do that. So we're going to pick up another first round pick. And my last trade here before the trade deadline, I'm going to send Bojan Bogdanovich and a future second, actually from Dallas, to Dallas for a swap horse between Dallas and OKC in 2028. Both those teams are probably going to be good. So that's going to be a pick in the 20s. And we're going to be getting Maxi Kleba. So we got to eat his bad contract as well. But we are going to have so much draft capital going forward, which is great to see. Like we are becoming the OKC Thunder in these later years in the 2020s. Like in 2029, we have five first round picks. 2028 we have three 2027 we have four first round picks so we're at the trade deadline we're 11 and 40 four games worse than the charlotte hornets in the eastern conference we're actually not the worst team in the nba that somehow goes to the utah jazz who are 10 and 40 right now damn the pelicans are eight games under 500 with this team i guess they really are missing a good big man and the warriors are the three seed in the western conference which which is kind of shocking i don't know how chicago how is chicago 10 games above 500 31 and 21 that will not be happening in real life i can't seem to get a first round pick for cam Johnson at the 
deadline. He does have three years left on his deal, so I'm going to be able to move him in the offseason. He's not going to make us much better. We're going to still finish with one of the worst records in the NBA this season. So let's just get done with year number one. Before that, though, we're going to sign Cam Thomas to a four-year contract with $80 million, which I think is very good value for both sides. I don't know if he's going to end up getting moved one day, but he can help us throughout this rebuild. I'm also a fan of Daron Sharp as well, so I'm going to give him a three-year deal, but a team option on the last year to back up Nick Claxton going forward. A bright side of this year, though, we did get Nick Claxton on all defensive second team. Honestly, it wouldn't be the worst idea to just try to trade him this offseason as well. Like, we're going to be bad for at least the next two years. I mean, Nick Claxton, like, by the time we're good, he'll be 28 years old. It could be kind of a similar philosophy on what the Washington Wizards did this offseason with Denny Avdia, because we ended up going 20 and 62. We ended up finishing with the worst record in the Eastern Conference and the worst record in the NBA. Cam Thomas did average 25 points per game though. 34% from the field, 83% from the line, 34% from three. I mean, did it result to wins? No, it did not, but that's definitely some nice aesthetic numbers right there. Cam Johnson didn't have the greatest year, which is probably gonna hurt his trade value in the offseason. Thanks a lot. Zyra Williams got some runtime. Yeah, he's pretty much been a bust. But I like the Nick Cox and Daron Sharp center duo. I actually think that's pretty solid. And then you got Noah Clowney as well. Like we have some nice big men on the roster. Ben Simmons will be gone at the end of the year. I'm not bringing him back. And then like Gabe Vincent, Maxi Kleba aren't going to be some fun contracts to deal with. Same with John Conchar. And Derek Whitehead, hopefully he can play a little bit more next year. And the Knicks and the Timberwolves are in the NBA Finals. And the Timberwolves beat the Knicks in the Finals. 2K loves the Timberwolves in the first year in 2K25. LeBron, Chris Paul, Kyle Lowry, Al Horford, Mike Conley retire all these guys from the 2007 and 2006 draft classes draft lottery time though look at that milwaukee pick that is top four protected from the mikhail bridges trade so we may have two lottery picks we're gonna give houston phoenix's pick but we're getting our pick so we're gonna have the 12th overall pick in this draft from the bucks which is pretty good and we're gonna have a top three pick let's go for the 2025 nba draft thankfully we did not fall to five in this lottery we're gonna be picking in the top two how about that let's see if we're gonna have the number one overall pick Okay, it's number two. I don't know why 2K still has Houston owning this pick. Were they asleep in the offseason when they made that trade the night of the Mikel Bridges deal? And the Grizzlies ended up with the number one overall pick. That could definitely change them to being a dominant team going forward. We also own the Knicks pick at 26. So I got to turn on trade override to make this happen. And I haven't like said this yet, but why did 2K? Like you used to be able to just slide this to the side and go... I don't know why they did this where you got to go into a screen to turn on and off trade override and all these like they just made that difficult why sorry i'm definitely nitpicking so we're gonna keep jordy fernandez as our head coach we signed him to be the coach throughout this rebuild and the night of the 2025 draft we're gonna be getting the other pick from this dallas okc swap we originally got the swap worse with the dallas trade at the deadline the Maxi Kleba Bojan deal. This trade, we're getting both picks. So we're going to have the Thunder and Mavericks picks in 2028. We got to pick up Cameron Williams' expiring contract. And we're going to be sending Cam Johnson, an elite three point shooter, to Oklahoma City. So let's see. Will the Grizzlies take Cooper Flag with the number one overall pick? Yes, they do. So Cooper Flag will not be in Brooklyn. And I'm going to take Ace Bailey with the second overall pick. I debated between him, Dylan Harper, Nolan Traor, but I kind of wanted to go with a wing here in Ace Bailey. Dink Pate from the G League Ignite, or no, excuse me, from the New Mexico G League team goes number three. Dylan Harper goes number four. And to wrap up the top five, it's Liam McNeely from UConn. And I'm going to try to make one draft night trade here involving picks. I'm going to try to move 12, 26, and 31 for pick eight. The Jazz are going to say no to that, which is kind of interesting. They say no to that. I think I can include a player in this deal as well. Um, I will throw in Shake Milton and they will agree to that. Okay. So we're going to be on the clock again in a few picks as Hugo Gonzalez goes to the pick right before me. So that means we could end up getting Nolan Treor as well in this draft. I don't think I'm going to go with Kamama Locke because we have Claxton and Sharpen. That would stump his development. VJ Edgecombe would be interesting, but we do have Cam Thomas right now. So I'm going to go Nolan Treor here, and we land him and Ace Bailey in the 2025 draft, which is definitely something to get excited about. Also, maybe the names are fixed in this 2K cycle, which will be pretty cool. Hopefully they develop to being great players for us. I'm going to pick up the team option on all three of these guys, Clowney, Wilson, and Whitehead. We are not giving Zaire Williams the qualifying offer. And Ben Simmons is definitely gone in free agency as well. I actually don't need to sign anybody in free agency. We do have a little bit of money we could actually spend, but I don't think I'm going to spend it right now. I'm okay being bad again next year. We do have some nice trade exceptions as well if we ever want to use them. 8 million from Bojan, 8 million from Dorian Finney-Smith, 
ninth and two million from Schroeder. And Cam Thomas is an 83 overall. You have Nick Claxton as an 83 as well. This is the year for pretty much Nolan and Ace Bailey, and then hopefully somebody else can emerge as well. And this is what the rotation is going to look like in the 2026 season. Nolan Treyor and Cam Thomas in that backcourt. You have Ace Bailey at the three, Noah Clowney at the four, and Nick Claxton at the five. Off the bench, you have Derek Whitehead, Jalen Wilson, Daron Sharp, Kenrich Williams, and Gabe Vincent. We had to pick up Eric Gordon and Ryan Rollins as well. First game of the year against the New York Knicks, Jalen Wilson actually scored 21 points in this one. We ended up losing 120-107, but we do win our second game of the year. We actually beat the Lakers. Cam Thomas dropped 27 in this one, and we won on the road as well. And we're looking to pick up our second win of the season against the Atlanta Hawks here at home as Nick Claxton gets a nice rebound right there. Nolan Troyer has a double-double in this one, 14-10. and 10. Cam Thomas has 31 points. He has been on fire this year offensively. He's going to go right at Jalen Johnson and finishes that at the rim. Puts us up like 19. I also mixed that up. That was Dyson Daniels, not Jalen Johnson. Claxton, oh, could not get the steal right there. Beautiful find from Troy Young to Jalen Johnson. Derek Whitehead was one of the better shooters at Duke in the pre-draft process. Can he knock down this three? He cannot. He has been struggling. And in poor summer league play, I don't know, man. Derek Whitehead, definitely a little bit of a disappointment um, with the Brooklyn Nets so far. Trey Young, no one, Troy or no issue for him. No issue for him whatsoever. 16 and 11. Jalen Johnson, no good. Beautiful contest from Nick Claxton. Just picked up his 15th rebound of the game and cam thomas could get to the rim no and one there but he's got 33 having a chance for 35 34 points for cam thomas in this one he's averaging 28 and a half on the year we are much better this year we're 10 and 32 through our first 42 games we have the worst record in the nba this season but thankfully we do own our first round pick this year cam thomas is actually scoring 26 points a night which is kind of insane, and the efficiency is up as well. Ace Bailey is averaging 14.7 points as a rookie, but the efficiency is definitely forgettable. Daron Sharp's averaging 11 and 8, which is nice to see, but he's my backup center. So then, do I just trade away Nick Claxton? And somehow, Nolan Traor is shooting 7% better from downtown than he is from the field. But I do think the building blocks are in place. I need Ace Bailey to perform better because it's been kind of gross. Now, I don't know if I would move Cam Thomas right now, but I could probably get a nice return for him. I would think about moving Nick Claxton at the deadline because I think I'm just getting equal production from Daron Sharp for basically a fourth of the price as well. And I'm going to make this trade with the Detroit Pistons. We're going to be picking up Tobias Harris, woo, my favorite player in the NBA. We're getting their lottery protected pick in 2028, and I'm going to be sending them Nick Claxton, making $26 million a year. Good player, but I think we're going to have cap space eventually to sign somebody of his caliber, or we could just keep progressing Daron Sharp to being the starting center going forward. So I'm just getting another draft pick to our treasure chest of draft picks. We have so many, and don't worry, we're gonna get our first round pick this year. And in his third year in the NBA, Wemby's your MVP. We do get rookie of the year though, okay. A little bit of a shocker, he was better in the second half, but Ace Bailey, who shot 39% from the field and 28% from three, 72% from the line, got rookie of the year, I I'll take it. Nick Claxton did make all defensive second team again, this time in Detroit now. And we did have two players on all rookie first team in Ace Bailey and Nolan Traor, who finished the year with 12 points and six assists, had really good efficiency for a rookie guard as well. But obviously we didn't make the playoffs whatsoever. The Pistons are there as the seventh seed with Nick Claxton and they're gonna be the seventh seed in the playoffs. But looking at the building blocks going forward right now, it's the backcourt of Nolan Traor and Cam Thomas. We have Ace Bailey at the three. Tobias, I wouldn't honestly be opposed to bringing him back as a veteran off the bench in the offseason. Daron Sharp is the starting center next year, unless we draft somebody. Noah Clowney kind of had a down year after some promise last year, which is quite unfortunate. I'd like to round out the bench with some more exciting pieces, but we should have a decent amount of money off the books as well because Tobias Harris' contract is up. You have Gabe Vincent gone. Maxi kluba has gone. But the thing as well, this is a auto-generated draft class. I mean, Freddie Peterson looks pretty good, but he is a point guard, so I don't know if I'm going to be looking for that. Jayshon Craig could be somebody really good as well, but we'd have to get semi-lucky in the lottery still. And here you have a rematch of the 2022 NBA Finals, and the Celtics get their revenge for that Finals, and Tatum gets his first Finals MVP. And there goes James Harden, Nets legend retiring. It is draft lottery time. We finished with the worst record in the NBA. Just please don't make me drop to five. All right, don't drop me to five. Please don't drop me to five. Okay, let's go. We're picking in the top four, and we're picking in the top three. Let's go. Philadelphia is picking at number four. Number three is going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder first. So for the second straight year, we're picking in the top two. Are we going to land the number one pick in the draft? No. So second year in a row, we're picking number two. I am okay with that. Number one overall goes to the Chicago Bulls. So I think I would look to take Jay Sean Craig here. It looks like Freddie Peterson is the consensus number one. And is that going to be the case? Yeah. Out of the point guard out of Baylor. So I think with the second overall pick, 
I am going to go with Jay Sean Craig. He's a little bit younger than everybody else, which I think I am fine with unless we like Dante Clements here. I mean, there are some enticing wings for sure, but we do have Cam Thomas. We do have Ace Bailey. This would be a full on like need pick here. <sighs> That's a little scary. But if you look at Jay Sean Craig, he only has C potential which is very scary. And I think I'm not going to do that. I think I may go with Dante Clementier, the 21 year old, I think just has a higher ceiling. We could go with Guillermo Ramos here, but I think I'm actually going to switch things up. We're going to go with Dante Clemens could even play a stretch four since he is six, eight out of TCU. And he is a 75 overall at the age of 21. It did look like Freddie Peterson was the clear 1.1 in that draft. Jay Sean Craig fell. Wow. He ended up going 13th to the Milwaukee Bucks. We also drafted two doors Stefan there at pick 44. We're going to sign him. Team player options. We're going to pick it up on Whitehead and Clowney. I may look to move one of them just to shed $5 million. Kemrich Williams, though, he's gone. I will give Jalen Wilson the qualifying offer, not to Ryan Rollins. I don't mind bringing back Tobias Harris on a one-year deal. Just a nice veteran to come off the bench. I'm also going to sign Nick Richards to a three-year deal who's going to be behind Daron Sharp as the backup center. And I'm going to sign Terry Rozier to be a nice combo guard off the bench. It's going to be a one-year deal, but I'll have a team option on the second year if we do want to bring him back. So we signed Tobias Harris, we signed Nick Richards, and Terry Rozier. Two former Hornets right there. And Paolo Bencaro does not go back to Orlando. He signs with the Sacramento Kings. De'Aaron Fox goes to the Hawks. Okay, so that makes me think Trey Young is now gone. Cam Thomas is an 84 overall. You got Ace Bailey at an 84 as well. This team should have its best year yet, but we probably may end up moving some of these veterans at the deadline like Terry Rozier and Tobias Harris. And this is going to be the starting five. Nolan Treyor, Cam Thomas, Ace Bailey, Dante Clemens, the most recent second overall pick, and De'Aaron Sharp with a bench of Terry Rozier, Noah Clowney, Tobias Harris, Nick Richards and Derek Whitehead. This could be Derek's last year as a Brooklyn Net, but he did show some progress last year, shooting 41% from three. We have a back to back to start off the year, and we actually start off the year 2 0. Cam Thomas drops 39 points on opening night against Detroit. Tobias Harris, 26 points against his former team. And then we took on the Sixers. Tobias played great against his former team as well. Cam had 24. And that's what I like to call improvement. 30 seed in the East right now, 31 and 21. I don't think we'll stay there just because our point differential. I mean, it is third in the East. Seems like the Pacers are definitely the best team right now. But we're seeing some nice year two jumps. Ace Bailey, a lot more efficient this year in year number two. The playmaking has gone up as well. Nolan Traor averaging 17 points and six assists on really good efficiency. He's still just 20 years old. Terry Rozier has been great off the bench. Man, that could get me a nice unprotected first at the deadline, but I don't even think I'm going to do it. I think we're going to see if this team can make the playoffs. And trading Nick Claxton was a smart move because De'Ron Sharp is putting up 13 rebounds a night, almost 11 points on good efficiency. Dante Clements is hitting that rookie wall, a thing we saw Ace Bailey hit last year. But also here for the 2027 draft, we have three first round picks. We have our pick swap horse with the Rockets, which now's the time for that to happen. We have the Sixers unprotected pick and the Knicks unprotected pick. And the Knicks are 24 and 27 and the Sixers are 16 and and 35. And I'm not going to pay him at the end of the year. Derek Whitehead still has immense upside as a floor spacing complimentary piece and San Antonio views that next to Wimbenyama. So we're going to get Kevin Waters in this deal. He was the 29th overall pick in this most recent draft. Hasn't really played for them. Just another center. But we're going to get a swap best between San Antonio and Boston in 2028. This pick is actually from the Derek White trade from the 2022 trade deadline. And I don't think trading away Derek Whitehead is going to affect our standings. We're keeping Tobias Harris. We're keeping Terry Rozier. Let's hopefully bring playoff basketball to Brooklyn for the first time time in a little bit. Luka Doncic ends up winning MVP. Hugo Gonzalez, rookie of the year. So he sat out his whole rookie season. This year, he just averages 22 and a half points. Okay. Dylan Harper, six man of the year in Detroit. Bronny James is winning most improved. I mean, he did improve. Most improved. That's crazy. We did get Dante Clemens on all rookie first team. Hopefully he's a lot better in year number two. But hey, the Nets are a playoff team. We're taking on the Raptors in round number one. We're the fifth seed. And I honestly think we could beat this Raptors team. They're not super scary. Cam Thomas's offense took a step back, but hey, I'm just glad we won games this year. He's an elite free throw shooter. I'll take that 35% from three with the volume he's on. Ace Bailey was so much better in year number two, and he should continue to get better. He's just 20. Him and Nolan Traor look like a real like foundational building blocks for us right now. Terry Rozier was a phenomenal signing. Phenomenal signing. I may have to pick up that team option. I like our starting five right now. I think I may adjust it though for the playoffs. I think I may insert Terry Rozier into the lineup. Not as the power forward though. Probably have him as like the two. I mean, we're going to run into some defensive issues with this lineup. So maybe not actually. Maybe we're going to keep him as the sixth man. I'll have Tobias Harris start over Dante Clemens. Game one against Toronto. We ended up losing this one by 28 points. Not great. Ace Bailey shot seven of 24. Game number two goes to Toronto. We ended up losing this one by 21 points. Cam Thomas had 34. We lose both in Toronto. 
Do we lose in Brooklyn? No, we keep this series still alive. If we go down 3-0, it's kind of over. Ace Bailey, welcome to the playoffs. Also, how about Daron Sharp getting 20 rebounds and three blocks in that game and nine offensive rebounds? beast. We're trying to tie the series up two games apiece, and we're going to do just that. We win both in Brooklyn right now. 32 points for Nolan Traor, 25 for Ace Bailey, 17, 22, and 5 for Daron Sharp. And we're going to take a 3-2 to two lead. We blow them out in game number 5 on the road in Toronto. Noah Clowney, team high 20 points, but we just had a plethora of guys in double figures. And we're looking to get our first playoff series win since what, the 2021 season? And it's looking like we're gonna do that. We're gonna blow them out in games five and six. We're gonna win four unanswered. Cam Thomas and Nolan Troyor, 53 combined. We're going on to round number two to take on the one-seeded Hawks who just beat the eight-seeded Wizards in seven. No longer have Trey Young, but they do have De'Aaron Fox. Game number one goes to Brooklyn, 129-123. Okay, this is a little bit of a run we're on. We do end up dropping game two, but I just split them in Atlanta with the one seed. I'm perfectly fine with that. Game three goes to Brooklyn. Wow, we could not score in the fourth quarter, but we still won. And this team is gonna go up three games to one. Cam Thomas drops 36 points at home, and we're one game away from making it to the conference finals, which is gonna have to wait a little bit. We're gonna get blown out in game number five. Oof, by 41 points. Ace Bailey shot six of 24 from the field. He's not really been great in the playoffs. He's been very inefficient. Game six at home. Can we advance to the conference finals on our home floor? Let's see. We have a strong first half. This is a close one, though. This has been close every single quarter. We're up by five, about three minutes to go, up by four. Do not choke this, please. I see Ace Bailey's in, Terry Rozier's in, Cam Thomas is in. Cam Thomas is probably going to try to do something going right at Patrick Williams, who's on the Atlanta Hawks right now. Takes a terrible shot. It gets blocked. Thankfully, Rozier picked that up. This is not a great matchup for us. Patrick Williams is a very good defender. Tobias Harris on the floor kicks it over to Cam Thomas, who's trying to go to work on Pat Will. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, what a pass to Daron Sharp with the left hand, but he can't finish. Oh, that was a beautiful find from Tam. Erase Tam. They also have Jalen Duran on this team, but Daron Sharp is holding his own out there. Ace Bailey with the help defense. I don't, like, what is Jalen Duran trying to do on the perimeter? He's not a ball handler. Reese Shea has the size advantage over Rozier. Kicks out to a Kung Wu. Pat, whoa, no, why are you fouling? Ace, what are you doing? Oh my God, we just bailed them out. And Pat knocks down the first two. He goes three for three. It's a one point game. Oh my God, that's inexcusable right there, Ace. All right, Ace is setting a screen for Cam Thomas. Just, we're not going anywhere off that. Oh, what an offset screen there. No one trade over three, no good. That was such a good look. Oh my God. All right, I just don't trust this offense right now. I mean, I'm not really scared of this Hawks offense because Fox isn't out there. They get an easy dunk and they have the lead. Oh my God, we're blowing this. This is insane. I can't even beat the allegations watching this. Cam Thomas trying to go right at Reese Ashe. He goes strong. He gets fouled. Oh, that was kind of lucky. And Reese Ashe fouls out. All right, De'Aaron Fox is in the game now. Cam hit both of them. Oh my God, that was so easy for Fox. But that is, I think, goaltending, right? Okay, that wasn't goaltending, but they're gonna get a new 24 shot clock. So they can take the final shot right here. Oh my God, this is it. I'm nervous. I mean, we'll see if the CPU wants to waste time. Clearly not. Fox pulls up. That is no good. Pass it, get it out of Sharp's hands, oh my god. I don't know if I trust Ace Bailey from the line. I'd rather it be Nolan Traor or Cam Thomas. Please, Ace, make up for that foul. Okay, huge first free throw is knocked down. The Hawks are without timeouts. If he hits this one, they have to go for a three. Ace makes it oh my god okay you made up for that foul can we clamp up they got it they need a three is fox just gonna pull up jalen johnson for three that is no good and it's looking like the brooklyn nets are advancing to the conference finals and we're gonna be taking on the winner of the knicks and the pacers battle of new york in the conference finals would be cool and that's what we're gonna get brunson had 27 points in game seven and they get revenge on the pacers and you have golden state minnesota over there as well Three of these four teams have had D'Angelo Russell at one point in his career. All right, battle of the New York teams here in the conference finals. This is pretty sick. I can't lie. If we could just make it a competitive loss, I'm okay with that. I'm just happy to be here right now. We are going to lose game one by 17 points. I just don't want to get swept. They also have DeAndre Aiden. Game number two goes to the Nets. So we split the games in Brooklyn. We do have home court since the Knicks are the seventh seed. Game three goes to Brooklyn by two. Oh my God. We had a horrendous third quarter, but we barely beat them. Cam Thomas with 25 in this one. Daron Sharp with 14 and 15. Are we going to go up three games to one? They tie it up. Okay, they end up winning by 11. Massive game five here. Damn, Nolan Troyar had 34, but we lost by 11. I think the Timberwolves are up three to one as well. So it's looking like they're going to be going back to the finals. We'll see. But we are dominating the Knicks in this one. Oh my God, it's going to be a blowout to be one game away from the NBA finals. 
Rozier with 31. Let's see what happens here in game number six at the Garden. Can we win on the road in advance of the NBA Finals? It's looking like we're going to a game seven. We blow them out in game number five, but they blow us out in game number six. Brunson had 49. And let's see what happens here. Game seven, the two best words in all of sports. It's a close first half, but we're down by 16. Ace Bailey shooting three of 10 for the field. He's been performing better, but we're gonna get blown out. That stinks. All right, you know what? I wanted it to be a competitive series. We were up three to two, but it was right there. So I'm kind of upset we got blown out in game six and seven. Anthony Edwards and Brunson are your conference finals MVPs. They played each other in the finals before, back in year number one, and the Wolves win again. They swept them and is your finals MVP. And Tobias Harris retires actually at the end of this season, which is crazy with the Knicks too, because I'm like, oh, we have their pick. They were 24 and 27. That pick's going to be later in the draft than I thought. So that Philly pick is there at number three. We're also going to get the Knicks pick at number 16, and we're in that swap with Houston, so we'll have the 28th pick. So I'm going to make my selections. The number one overall pick, the Utah Jazz, get Aguilar here, a point guard from Puerto Rico. Lionel Willis out of DePaul goes number two, which is pretty cool because DePaul is, I believe, in Chicago technically, so that is pretty cool that he is a bull. So the mock drafts have us taking Wes Hill. He's definitely a project play, another player out of TCU. We did that last year. That could be the pick here. I think I may opt for Tess Hill. It's just another power forward who does have B-plus potential long-term. So we're going to do that. He could also headline a trade as well. And Hill, yeah, 72 overall. It's going to take a little bit of time for him to develop. I took Maxwell Blount there, 19 years old, 6'6", uh, out of Alabama there at 16. And we got Brendan Westbrook um, there wait in the first round. I'm going to pick up the team option on Rozier, unless I think I can get him for cheaper which I should keep my options open, so we will do that. I'm not going to bring back Tudor Stefan. Obviously, picking up the team options on these two. So I want to bring back Rozier. Jokic is a free agent. I will not be signing him. Jalen Wilson, I'm going to keep giving the qualifying offers to. I just wanted to see. I have cap space. We could get Trey Young. We could get Steph Curry. I need a wing, preferably. So unless like Brandon Miller makes it out of Moratorium or Bal Kuobali, I don't know if I'm going to land a big wing. Like I definitely want to bring back Rozier. Um, the Knicks are trying to get him, but I think I can give him a little bit more money. Um, yeah, so I'll save money annually by giving him three years, 30 million. One last nice contract for him. And to be honest with you, I don't know if I'm going to land a like, I don't know, franchise changing player in free agency. Let's set up the trade market. I have all these picks and cap space. Zion Williamson is in the last year of his deal. This would be pretty cool if we could pick him up. I don't know if they value Dante Clemens or West Hill more. It looks like it's the same. So I'd probably give them West Hill, but he's five-star trade value, which is going to be very tough. I would have to probably give up a decent amount of draft capital. And we've acquired all this. Like I could give you four first-round picks next year, as well as a future first-round pick from the Lakers, all for Zion Williamson, who's in the last year of his deal they say no. You know what? Jabari Smith Jr., I feel like he's not reaching his fullest ceiling in Houston. He did get a nice contract extension from them, so I don't think I would have to give up too much. I guess I should headline it with, I, I think, maybe Kevin Waters, who we got last year in the Derrick Whitehead return. And what about Brendan Westbrook? So I could maybe keep West Hill on all this. I would give up probably three first-round picks in next year's draft. Would that be enough for Jabari Smith Jr.? It would not be. They would want Nick Richards, who I should be willing to give up, even though I do like him as a backup five. I got to take on Fred Anderson, who has yet to play. He was a former 16th overall pick. Let's do it. Welcome to the team, Jabari Smith Jr. That's going to be a fun power forward for us going forward. Noah Clowney wants $17 million. I don't know if I'm going to pay him that. We are going to sign Terry Rozier three years, $31 million. And we should still have a little bit of money to play with if I want to get maybe some more veterans on this team. So I'd like to add like a true backup center and maybe another shooting guard into the mix as well. Like we could pick up Jordan Hawkins. Max Christie's coming off a nice year with the Lakers. I guess Noah Clowney could be the backup five so maybe i'll just look to getting another wing and i like the idea of getting josh green so i'm just gonna offer me a two-year deal with the team option and hopefully i'm still able to bring back noah Clowney. i wouldn't be able to hmm okay so i'm not gonna offer him that contract yet so it's gonna be a one-year deal i would unfortunately have to renounce the rights on jalen wilson if he accepts this offer one year is nine million. Oh, i think noah Clowney took another deal damn that hurts yeah he got wow 45 million from the jazz ah that hurts okay i needed a better backup center Oh, uh, that's going to be tough to find. I mean, I could look out and get Zach Collins. Oh, it's not great. All right, let me sign Zach Collins, and then we're probably going to maybe have to add one at the trade deadline. I'm going to take a flyer on Arik Chomshi as well. Just money I can move at the deadline. That hurts, though. But I do like the addition of Jabari Smith Jr. This team made it to the conference finals last year, and Dante Clemens is up to an 80 overall now. So it's going to be Treyor, Thomas, Bailey, Jabari Smith, and Daron Sharp in the starting five. And then we have Rozier, Clemens, Green, Hill, and Collins off the bench. We are four-star balanced under Jordy Fernandez. First game of the season against the Miami Heat at home. We won by 20. What a great start 
to the year, Jabari Smith Jr. in his first game as a Brooklyn Net drops 28 points. At the deadline, we are the two seed in the Eastern Conference, and I don't think we're frauds like the Raptors this year. We do have a very good point differential at 6.1, so I do think we can make it to the NBA Finals, but it's just like, are we better than any of these teams in the Western Conference? Jabari Smith Jr.'s efficiency isn't where I'd like it to be. I thought he could carry in the efficiency with the volume. We're seeing the volume this year. Great counting numbers, but the efficiency could be better in the second half. I think Cam Thomas, 50-40-90 is a number two option beautiful. Then you got Ace Bailey. His efficiency is better this year, but not by uh, a ton. Nolan Traor is averaging 7.2 assists, an elite shooter. I like De'Ron Sharp at the five. I, I really do. It is unfortunate that Dante Clemens, I mean, he hasn't been shooting the ball better. I'd like for Clemens to be shooting the ball a little bit better come playoff time, and West Hill... <sighs> Man, these rookies do not have good rookie seasons. All right, so I'm going to be making this trade with the Orlando Magic. John Collins, I won't be able to afford next year, but it's going to be a nice offensive backup big man for the playoffs. And West Hill, like, shouldn't really be in there either. So he could play the four, the five. Isaac will become a nice tradable contract in the offseason, but a good defender. We're going to send them um, Ulrich Chomchi. We're going to send them Fred Anderson, who's going to be on his, like, third team now. And a swap worse between Philadelphia and Washington. They're going to agree to that because Philadelphia and Washington both have not been, I guess, great this year. I mean, Washington is 24 and 26. Philadelphia is 24 and 27. We also own the Knicks first rounder this year. They're 21 and 30. And Luka Doncic wins another MVP this year. Jabari Smith Jr. Wow. We're, we may win a championship, hopefully, with him as our number one option. The efficiency was better in the second half. A steal and block a night. All NBA second team honors. Let's go. And we finish as the one seed in the Eastern Conference. We're going to be taking on Charlotte. Who has a good young team, man, in round number one? That's that's a scary matchup. But I do think that we're going to be able to beat them. I am excited about this team. I think picking up John Collins was great at the deadline. Dante Clemens was a lot more efficient in the second half. Josh Green's going to be going up against his former team. He's going to get like 15 minutes a night. We'll go like 18 to Collins, probably 16 to Clemens, 19 to Rozier, who is still just an efficiency god for us. Then we're going to go 36 to Jabari Smith, 31 to Sharp, 34 to Bailey, 35 to Treyor. We'll go 35 to these guys. And round number one against Charlotte, I'm nervous. And we lose game one in over time to the eighth seed. Damn. Bailey and Smith combined for 52, but Peyton Miller combined for 50. That got it done. Oh my God, we're down 2-0. Come on, man. Oh, that's a good eight seed. That's a really good eight seed. And we just lost both games in Brooklyn. Here's Charles from the R2K. Game number three. It's in Charlotte. We have a great offensive first quarter, but we're kind of blowing it in the third. Oh God, it's a high scoring game. We're going to win our first playoff game though. We dropped 151. Cam and Jabari Smith combined for 30, excuse me, 66. 15 assists for Nolan Traor. Must win game four. We got to win both of them in Charlotte. I can't believe we lost both of them in Brooklyn, man. That is embarrassing. What is that second quarter? We're going to be down three games to one. We're down three games to one. Oh my God, we came back. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Oh my God, we outscored them 47 to 31 in the fourth. What? Jabari Smith Jr., you are a beast. Cam Thomas, man, came to play as well. Oh my God, our season is still alive. We almost lost it right there. Game five in Brooklyn. Come on, we have to have all the momentum right now. Let's have an elite third quarter. We're down by five. Come on, can we have that fourth quarter magic we did last game? Oh my God, we're outscoring them by 10. They are choking these games in the fourth quarter. I lied. Thank God we have the ball. Please, somebody step up. I don't know who it needs to be. Don't turn it over. Don't turn it over. Please get the ball in bounds. Oh my God, if it was five seconds. We're going to Nolan Traor. 19 seconds to go, down by one. This is to take game number five. All right, Nolan, just don't settle for a pull-up jumper. Come on, somebody set a screen for him. What are we doing? Get it to Jabari Smith. Okay, that's who I want to have the ball. Going right at T. John Salon. Two, oh God, he's got to take a terrible look. What was that? Damn, this is just to make it out of game number one. Uh, here we go. Game number six on the road. Or excuse me, round number one. Oh my god, man. We're jeez, this has not been a fun series at all. I mean, we had a nice second quarter. Third quarter we kind of blew it. Fourth quarter we came back. We're up by 10. I think we're okay. Yeah, we're gonna be okay. We end up winning by 16. Jabari was great. John Collins was great as well. All right, here we go. Game seven of round number one. We gotta do three more rounds here at home as well. An abysmal first quarter. Not a good second quarter after a good start. Oh, this is it for us, folks. This is it for us. Wow, what a disappointing end to the year. We lose by 25. Damn. 
That that stinks. Nolan Traor, six for 21 in game seven. They ended up losing to the Toronto Raptors in six. Detroit beat Toronto in seven. Will Dallas win it all? Yep, so Luka gets MVP and finals MVP in the same season. Terry Rozier retires. All right, that's gonna hurt if I don't have a mid-level exception in free agency. He leaves $21 million on the table. Shout out to the draft lottery though. Shout out to the Mikel Bridges trade. Still gonna be paying dividends. We have the third overall pick in this year's draft. And Orlando is gonna get pick 16 from the John Collins deal. We're gonna be bringing back Jordy Fernandez and on a new four-year extension. Anton Bosch goes number one overall, Chris Bosch's son. Ellis Hart goes number two. And I'm gonna go Roland Thompson here, a 6'9 big man at number three out of Arizona State. Has nice potential. He is a 75 overall. Lauren Bailey, we got at 30, is a 70 overall. Not the greatest overalls with these draft picks at the top. I, it looks like we got the best guy. Giannis is a free agent. I, I would love to be able to sign him, but unfortunately we do not have cap space. Wow, this is an elite free agency class with Giannis, Zion, Booker, and Ja. And with Rozier gone, I'm gonna offer Tyus Jones a two-year contract to be behind Nolan Traor. We're probably gonna move on from Josh Green here. I don't know if we're gonna have any more money to spend on a wing. A little bit. I'll give a one-year deal to Kevin Herter. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to lose out on John Collins as well. It would be funny to bring back Cam Johnson. So I'm going to sign B-Ball Paul. We'll have an interesting center rotation next year, at least until the deadline. But we'll see if Jabari Smith Jr. can carry this team. I can't believe we lost in round one. At the trade deadline, best year yet. Everybody is progressing. We're 41 and 11. We have a 14.9 point differential. Best in the NBA. Ace Bailey and Jabari Smith Jr. are doing it all scoring-wise. Nolan Troyor, career high, 17.7 points. Points on the year. Dante Clemens breakout year is here. He's an 87 overall, 38% from three, 50% from the field. And we're going to upgrade the backup center spot for the playoffs. We're going to be sending a Knicks first round pick, the expiring of Jonathan Isaac and John Collins, or excuse me, Zach Collins to the Miami Heat for Isaiah Harnstein and Blake Wesley. It's to get Harnstein as the backup five to Dayron Sharp. Shout out to Jordy Fernandez getting coach of the year, 67 and 15. And the second straight year, we are the one seed in the Eastern Conference going up against Chicago in round number one. Freddie Peterson, yeah, that number one overall pick back in 26, 94 overall now. This is just a really good team. This is just a really good team. And I would be very upset if we lost in round number one to Chicago. We win game number one in blowout fashion. And somehow we're just up three games to two and we're going to another game seven in round number one. I can't. I can't, man. Why do they have to do this to me? Don't make me rage. Don't make me rage in one of my just early rebuilds here in 2K25. It's looking good right now. We are going to be advancing to round number two for the first time in two years on the backs of Ace Bailey dropping 38. Now we're going to take on the Pacers. They're a good team, but they maybe peaked with their core. We take the first two games. Love to see that. We take the first three. Don't blow a 3 0 lead. Boom in the conference finals. A rematch against the Hornets. Ace Bailey is dropping 27 a night in the playoffs currently. Game number one against Charlotte, we win. Game number two, we win. Game number three, we win. Okay, do not blow a 3 0 lead. And boom. How do we go to seven against Chicago? Oh, man. But then we sweep the next two series. Give me the Thunder. All right, here we go. Going up against the OKC Thunder. They offered me J-Dub a couple times in trades and Case and Wallace. We'll see, man. We'll see if we can end up beating them. I love how it still says that we're rebuilding as a team. Yeah, I get that in 2025. No longer anymore. Game one goes to Brooklyn. Massive win by 15. Jabari Smith drops 44. Double doubles with assist for Ace and Nolan. Game number two goes to Brooklyn. Boom, we blow them out. All right. I don't know why Chicago really gave us that big of a fight. We drop game three in OKC. I'm nervous. Game four goes to OKC. Come on, man. Oh my God, we lost by two in overtime. <sighs> Huge game five at the Barclays. Oh, Jay-Z is probably in attendance, man. This is not good. I am scared they can go on a little bit of a run. And they, oh my God, blow us out in the third. But we have a great fourth quarter. Come on, hold strong, please. Up by five with 50 seconds left. We end up winning by eight. We're up three games to two. We were up three games to two against the Knicks a few years ago, and we blew a 3-2 lead. Don't let that happen here. Let's win game six. I don't want to go to a game seven. Oh, we're down by one. Oh, man, we're down by 12. Yeah, we're going to a game seven. They beat us by 16. Don't ruin the rest of my day, 2K. Please don't ruin the rest of my day. Just don't get blown out. Oh, my God. Okay, we have a great first half. Great first half. Great first three quarters. We're going to be doing the blowing out. Let's go. We're going to be doing the blowing. Pause. Oh, how did we not get that steal? That's embarrassing. When it mattered the most, Ace Bailey, 25 points and 12 assists. We have developed him into a star in this league. Dante Clemens also a shaky rookie year, but has developed into a nice scorer in this league. He's gonna miss that though. Also picking up Jabari Smith was a great pickup as well. Chet for three. 
That is no good. Damn, Boudoir is such a good defender. Dante Clemens for three. That is no good. Daron Sharp is right there. He gets blocked by Chet. Oh, they're double teaming Jabari Smith. Clemens gets open for three. That is good. He's got 25. Nice find there from Jabari. And the Brooklyn Nets have won the NBA title. We have turned this team around from being the worst team in the NBA for pretty much the first two years of this rebuild to now being a great team. And we win it all in year number five. It feels good, man. It feels good. We never really got like a true superstar on this team. But at times, Jabari Smith became that for us. We kind of developed Ace Bailey into a superstar as well. And it's funny. We beat the Thunder. Ironic enough, we kind of became the Thunder of the Eastern Conference with all those draft picks we had multiple top five picks that center we recently took we took west hill dante clemens nolan Treor, ace bailey obviously and we get a ring for it finals mvp goes to jabari smith jr i could see why they were double teaming him 27 and 10 and that is gonna be for me i hope you guys did enjoy my nba 2k 25 brooklyn nets rebuild if you did i would appreciate it if you drop a thumbs up subscribe if you were not already let me know in the comments which team i should rebuild next and i'll catch y'all in the next one peace